Do you find infusible ink super confusing? When I first started using infusible ink, I did not understand what it was or what I could apply it to. So if you have those same questions, then you're in good company. My name is Alex Vanover with DIY Alex, and I'm so glad that you guys are here because in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what infusible ink is, what you can apply it to, and I'm going to show you how to use it by applying infusible ink to a ceramic mug. But the things I'm going to teach you in this video can be used on other infusible ink projects as well. So by the end of this video, you should be confident in using infusible ink yourself. So let's get into it. So before we get into today's project, let's talk about what infusible ink is. Infusible ink is essentially a pre-printed sublimation sheet that is created by Cricut. So when you first pull the ink out of the box, it's gonna look really dull and faded, but don't worry, that's totally normal. Then you'll take your infusible ink transfer sheet, put it on a mat and send it into your Cricut machine so that you can cut out the design of your choice. Then you'll get the infusible ink transfer sheet out of your machine and weed away the excess. Then you'll apply it to a compatible blank, not just any blank, a compatible blank. And once you apply it to that special material using the heat, it'll have bright, vivid color, just like you can see over here on my mugs. After applying infusible ink to that compatible blank, it is fused into the fabric or onto the surface. So it's completely permanent. It doesn't have any texture of its own, so it just takes on the texture of the blank. Unlike HTV, where you can actually feel it on the surface, infusible ink just blends into the surface of the blank. And because infusible ink is fused into the surface, the mugs that we're making today are completely microwave and dishwasher safe. And that is one of the reasons why I love working with infusible ink. In this video, we're going to be focusing on infusible ink transfer sheets. But I do want you to know that infusible ink does come in pen form also. You can take these pens and put them in your Cricut machine and you can write or draw designs and apply it similarly to the way that you apply infusible ink transfer sheets but I don't want to focus on too much today to overwhelm you. So if you want to learn more about infusible ink pens, you may have to do some additional research. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on infusible ink transfer sheets. So now let's talk about finding compatible blanks for infusible ink. Infusible ink requires the same type of blanks that sublimation does which basically means it has to have a high polyester content. So if you're putting your infusible ink onto fabric, it needs to be at least 65% polyester. Or if you're working with a hard surface blank, like a mug, it must have a polyester coating on the outside of it or essentially be a sublimation compatible blank. Something else to keep in mind is that infusible ink blanks must be white or very light colored in order to be compatible because there is no background behind the infusible ink. So that's why it needs a light color blank in order to show up. Any blank that would work for sublimation will also work for infusible ink. So that's the really neat thing about using infusible ink is it essentially allows you to practice sublimation without having to own your own sublimation printer. Infusible ink requires very hot and very specific temperatures in order to be applied correctly. So that means that irons cannot be used to apply infusible ink. Infusible ink requires a device that can be temperature controlled and get hot enough. So for example, in today's video, I'm going to be using the Cricut mug press to apply the infusible ink to our mugs. But if you're not using your infusible ink on a mug, you'll require either an easy press to or a heat press to apply your infusible ink correctly. So you may have noticed when you're shopping for infusible ink that it comes in these larger boxes in 12 by 12 sheets, as well as smaller boxes for the Cricut Joy. And what I want you guys to know is that all of this infusible ink is the same. The only difference is the sizing. So of course, these larger pieces can be used on Cricut Explore and Cricut Maker machines. And then the smaller size is intended for the Cricut Joy, but you can actually use the Cricut Joy size on the larger machines. It's just that you can't use the larger boxes on the Cricut Joy because they're too big. Now I do like working with the smaller sizes of infusible ink for mugs because there's a little bit less waste of your infusible ink sheet since we're only going to be cutting a small piece anyway. But that's the difference between all of those sizes, so don't let that confuse you. So you'll notice that infusible ink arrives in a box, and then when you open it up, it's also in another container. 
All of Infusible Ink comes in this dark paper as well. And that's because Infusible Ink is light sensitive. So my best tip for storing extra Infusible Ink is actually to put it back into this tube and stick it back in the box when you're storing it so that it doesn't get too much light and alter the ink. Then when we open up the tube, there's a couple of things you'll notice. There's a few sheets of infusible ink in here and how many sheets will depend on the package. The outside of the box will always let you know how many is in it. Um, but it also comes with butcher paper right inside the roll. And butcher paper is something we're gonna use while we're pressing the infusible ink. So if you don't have any separate butcher paper, do know that your infusible ink comes with one piece of butcher paper per sheet. Each pack also comes with a lint-free cloth to wipe off your blank before you press it as well. So there's a lot of materials already inside the box for when you need to get started with your projects. So now that you know more about infusible ink, let's dive into this project and I'll give you more tips about infusible ink all along the way. To get started with your infusible ink mug, the first thing we need to do is go into the projects section in design space, which is along the left hand side of the screen in the design panel. So we'll click on the project section and then in the search bar at the top of projects, I want you to type in these exact keywords. Type in drawn mug design setup drawn mug design setup, and then search. The project or the template that we're gonna use is this first um, search result here that says your design here on the mug. Click on that project to open it up, and then you can scroll down a little bit to choose your finished mug size. So you have two options of the 12 ounce mug or the 15 ounce mug. So we'll go ahead and just choose the 12 ounce size. Then once your mug size is chosen, you can click on the customize button. Then once you have your template on your canvas, next we need to import our design that we're actually gonna use for our mug. So to do that, we'll go back to the design panel along the left-hand side of the screen and then click on the upload button. Then you can choose the SVG file that I created for you and provided for this class. And once you have it selected, you can click the green add to canvas button. So then when the SVG file imports into Design Space, it's going to look something like this. So let me zoom out and explain to you the thought process that I had when I designed these SVGs for you. So you can see here that we have two different options for our mugs and that these are both designed for 12 ounces. So to begin in editing them individually, I'm first going to select my SVG file and then come to the top of the layers panel and select ungroup. And then once I have everything ungrouped, I can start looking at the files individually. Individually. You'll see that you have these images with the tabs here on the sides in both of your images and those are just mostly for visualization purposes because we're going to end up using this template here from Design Space to size our image exactly. But I wanted you to see what a file would look like if you were cutting it out of infusible ink for a mug. So once you have your files ungrouped then you can click on this little 12 ounce piece of text and delete it. So you can either do that by clicking delete on your keyboard or using the trash can at the the top of the layers panel. Then you can choose your preferred template and start sizing it here on the mug design template. So I'll show you how to do that with both. But in the end here, I'm going to end up um, using this design for our project today. So when we bring the template over here, we can see that it basically fits right on top, but we need to end up ungrouping one more time so that I can actually delete the background because I'm not gonna need either background piece of um, this file because we're going to use the template here as our background. So then once you have the file on the template, then you can start fitting it to the edges of the file here. So maybe we'll get a little bit closer and make sure this is going to line up with the bottom. And I might actually make this just a little bit shorter to make sure that it fits perfectly onto the template. So you'll see these dotted lines on the sides and that's as far as you wanna go with your infusible ink design. So that's why we have the design stopping a little bit short of those lines. Then we have these different areas around the mug. So each of these dotted lines is representing like a third of the way around the mug. This is one third of the way around, this is halfway, and then this is kind of two thirds away around the mug. So it's very helpful visually, which is why I recommend using the drawn mug design setup so that you can always see what you're doing when you design your mug designs. However, I'm gonna click on this SVG and then go into the layers panel and click on the eyeball so that we don't have that. So I can show you how to format the other SVG file on top of the mug design template. So we'll go back to this piece 
select everything and kind of bring it over. And then we'll follow the same process. So I'm going to click on the SVG and ungroup it so that I can select both the blue layer and delete it and also the pink layer and delete it. Then we can take our mug design and sort of size it the way that we want it to look on the template. So I am always an advocate of making it just a little bit smaller so that it doesn't quite go all the way to the edges. That way we know it's going to fit really nicely. Now if you wanted to, you could stretch the design out a little bit to the sides if you prefer. But I honestly think that that looks really good and I like the way that it looks. So then once I'm finished with sizing everything, then I need to go ahead and get rid of these guidelines because they are just here to be a guide. They're not here necessarily to um, actually go to the cut mat. So we'll go back into the layers panel and click on that eyeball once again. So in order to get our design to actually cut on top of the template, next we're going to click and hold the mouse down and select both layers at the same time by the method I like to call drawing a box. So as my mouse is still held down, you can see that my cursor has become like this cross type of shape and I'm drawing this little gray box behind it. So I'm just going to move my mouse so that the whole design is encompassed in my box and then let my mouse go and that selects everything all at the same time. And once I have both layers selected, then I'm going to click on attach to make sure that my design actually cuts on top of my template exactly where I want it to. But before we proceed through our project, I do want to explain best practices for picking images when it comes to SVG files, because you can definitely get yourself in a very sticky situation if you don't pick images that are going to work well. So as an infusible ink beginner, I recommend starting with images that are one color or also known as one layer images. And I recommend keeping them a little bit on the simpler side. So even though this SVG file does have like some little tiny pieces here for the bees, you'll notice that this bee is all one solid color. And that's because I did not want you to have to weed out individual little tiny cuts on this bee. So I just went ahead and made him one solid piece. That way it's super, super easy to weed. And I recommend you think about things like that when choosing your images, because essentially weeding infusible ink is a lot like weeding cardstock. It feels a little bit funky and really, really intricate pieces just don't really translate very well onto infusible ink the way that they do on other mediums. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But if you do decide that you wanna work with multiple colors of infusible ink on a mug, it definitely can be done. And the way that you would do that is you would cut both of your layers on separate colors of infusible ink, but you're only going to press one time. So that means you would take the other pieces from a separate layer and combine them with your single layer so that they were all on the transfer sheet at the same time. And then you would just do one press of all your colors at once. So since that can get kind of complicated, that's why I recommend sticking to just one color as an infusible ink beginner. So then once we have everything attached, we'll definitely want to save our project. So I'll just save it as Hello Spring Mug. Anytime that you work with infusible ink, you always want to be sure to check the mirror button. And I'll show you why that is when we get to the Cricut machine, but you always, always, always mirror with infusible ink. Then once your design is mirrored, you can click on the green continue button. And once my Cricut Maker 3 connects, next I need to choose my base material or my cut setting. And I'm going to choose the infusible ink transfer sheet cut setting because that's exactly what my Cricut is designed to cut. And so I've always found really great results with this cut setting. And we'll also get this little message that reminds us to turn on our mirroring and place our infusible ink with the ink side up. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I'll show you how to do that in the next step. Once your cut setting is chosen, next we can hop over to my Cricut machine and I'll show you exactly how to set up your infusible ink on your cutting mat. So anytime that I cut infusible ink, I always like to use a green standard grip cutting mat. And when it comes to cutting projects for infusible ink mugs, you can use either the smaller size or the larger size. So I'm going to be using this pack of my infusible ink transfer sheets. And I think I'm going to use this green color because I think that'll be really pretty on a spring mug. So I'll just open up my package of transfer sheets and grab the sheet out of the package that I'm going to be using today. 
So you'll notice that the colors of the ink look super dull when you take them out of the package, and that is normal for infusible ink. So even though they look nice and bright here on the box, they're gonna look dull at first, and they'll get nice and bright like this after we apply them to the mug. So next, I'm gonna remove the clear cover sheet over top of my mat. And to get ready to place this piece of infusible ink onto my cutting mat. Now keep in mind, infusible ink has the ink side and it also has a sticky carrier sheet on the back side of it. And whenever you place infusible ink on your mat, you want to put the transfer sheet side down with the pretty ink side up onto your cutting mat. Because if you stick your infusible ink down to the mat, it will most definitely ruin your infusible ink. So make sure it's that transfer sheet side down. We're just gonna place it across the top of the mat like this. Now, something else to keep in mind about infusible ink is if you have any lotion or like any kind of oily residue on your hands, it can mess up your infusible ink. So instead of pushing it down with my hands, I like to use a brayer tool to actually just kind of roll it into place. That way I don't risk messing up my infusible ink sheet. Then once that's in place, I can insert it into my Cricut Maker 3 to begin cutting. And something else to keep in mind is that any Cricut machine on the market can cut infusible ink. So I happen to be using my Cricut Maker 3 today, but any Cricut machine that you have works great with infusible ink. So I'll load my mat first. And after my machine measures my mat, I'll begin cutting. Once your machine is finished cutting your infusible ink, you can remove it from the machine. And then we need to remove it from our mat very carefully. So the best way that I found to do this is to turn the mat over and remove the infusible ink from the mat like this. And next it's time to weed our infusible ink. So weeding infusible ink is kind of like weeding cardstock that has a sticky paper backing. So I found a couple of things that I found make it a little bit easier for weeding. And the first is rolling the design between your fingers kind of like this. And I like to call this cracking because it push, it pulls up some pieces of the design. But I think if you do this first all over your design, it really helps to loosen the edges of some of that infusible ink and makes it harder to remove. So you can kind of see those edges start to pop up, but I think it really helps. The next tip that I have for you when weeding your infusible ink is only to use a weeding tool to get the design started. You mostly actually wanna weed with your fingers. And this is partially because the weeding tool can actually rip away a lot of parts of the infusible ink and you don't want that. So it's easier to use your fingers to remove as many pieces as you can and just use the weeding tool to get things started and then maybe for some really fine details. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use my weeding tool here in the corner to peel away the infusible ink around the edge of the cut. And you'll see that it actually pulls away pretty easily with my fingers. So I don't need my weeding tool very much. And since I'm gonna be weeding away the background of my infusible ink, I wanna cut some parts of my transfer sheet so that I know what width I want to wrap around my mug. Next, I'm gonna begin by just starting to peel away the background with my fingers so that all that's left are the infusible ink pieces that I want to transfer onto my mug. And these little pieces that represent where the bee was flying, we do need to be a little bit careful with these as they can uh, tend to get stuck in the infusible ink. So we'll just go nice and slow and controlled. But another tool that's really helpful when weeding infusible ink is a pair of craft tweezers in case you have to put anything back in place. And similar to HTV, because the carrier sheet is sticky, it's gonna hold a lot of those little details in place for us. 
And then if you have any little pieces get stuck into your transfer sheet, like I said with those tweezers, having tweezers handy really does make things a lot easier. Now that I have all of the big pieces removed, now I'll go back in with my weeding tool and remove any pieces between the letters, the pieces from the honeycomb and inside the bee. And then when you think you're done with weeding, I recommend flipping over your infusible ink sheet and looking at the shape of everything to make sure that there's no pieces missed or that you want to rearrange. Then once you're finished with weeding, next it's time to prepare our mug for infusible ink. Next, to prepare your mug for infusible ink, you can do this in two different ways. Each pack of infusible ink comes with a lint-free cloth that you can use to wipe off your mug or you can just use something like a lint roller. And this is just to remove any dust or dirt or anything that's accumulated on your mug, even oils from your hands, to ensure that we get a really, really great press. And then it's time to position your infusible ink on top of your mug. So you're gonna take your infusible ink sheet and you wanna make sure that the colored side is facing in at the mug, so the white side is facing out at you. This is also the sticky side of your transfer sheet. So I like to start by lining up one part of the design on one side and then kind of wrapping it around accordingly. But it looks like this is a little bit tall for my mug. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim away some of the excess carrier sheet so that I can line this up exactly where I want it. So I'll start by lining up the Hello Spring on one side. It looks like I might have to trim some more. And I'll kind of stick it down using the transfer sheet. And then I'll wrap it all the way around the mug to the other side. And this side looks like it's really, really far away. So that means I need to adjust my design on this side. So since I've had to touch my mug a couple of times while I was placing my infusible ink, I'm gonna go ahead and lint roll it one more time before I try to stick it on again to make sure there's no residue left over from my fingers. So once I know I like my mug placement on one side, I'm really gonna do a good job of sticking down the carrier sheet on that side. Then I'm gonna go around the mug and just press the carrier sheet down nice and slowly. That way I can work out any bubbles or wrinkles of the carrier sheet to make sure that it has really good contact with the mug so that my infusible ink transfers over really nicely. And if I have any areas with big bubbles, I can also cut slits into my carrier sheet if necessary, just to make sure we can remove that air so that the contact is really good. Then once I'm happy with the placement of my carrier sheet and my infusible ink, Next, I'm gonna take a piece of butcher paper that was included in my pack of infusible ink and wrap it around my mug. Now this, I'm obviously gonna to have to cut some away because it's a little bit too long, but the goal is to make sure that you are covering all of the infusible ink with the butcher paper to protect the inside of your press. Then once you trim it down to size, you'll wanna secure it in place with some heat tape. And again, once you tape down that butcher paper, make sure that you have it wrapped nice and tight all the way around your mug so that it's not too loose. Then just to make sure the contact on the bottom of the mug is really even, I am gonna trim any pieces of carrier sheet or butcher paper that hang below the bottom of the mug. And once that looks good, we're ready to add the mug into our Cricut mug press. So while I let my Cricut mug press preheat, I wanna tell you a little bit more about the Cricut mug press and why it makes this process so easy. So the Cricut mug press is great because it automatically detects the time and temperature that my mug is going to need to press. So I don't have to worry about any press settings or any temperature settings because the Cricut mug press will detect all of that for me. However, if you're using a different type of tumbler or mug press, then you can look up the press settings that you need using the Cricut heat guide. If you just Google Cricut heat guide, it will come right up. And once the light on the Cricut mug press is green, that's how you know it's preheated and ready to go. So you'll just place your mug in the chamber and make sure that you have the handle here over to the side so that all of the infusible ink is covered. Then you can lower the lever 
and the lights along the Cricut mug press will begin to light up. When all the lights are lit and flashing, that's how we'll know that our mug is ready to be removed. As soon as all the lights are blinking, then you can raise up the lever and remove your mug from the chamber very carefully. Now it's recommended that you let your mug cool on a Cricut Easy Press mat, but technically as soon as it is removed from the chamber, you can peel it if you'd like. So if you decide you wanna see it right away, make sure that you're nice and safe and you use heat gloves to hold on to your mug. So I like to use a heat glove on one hand and tweezers on the other hand to remove the protective paper and the infusible ink sheet. Then we can peel away the carrier sheet and see what's left behind. I still have some little pieces of infusible ink on there, so that's why some of the design can't be seen. Hang on. I'll use my other heat glove to remove those. Oh my goodness, you guys, this turned out so great. I always love the watercolor look of all the patterns of infusible ink. I think it just adds so much dimension to the design and they turn out so cute. I am just obsessed with this cute little Hello Spring mug. Do you see how once the infusible ink paper is removed, it's completely fused into the surface of the ceramic? That's the magic of infusible ink. It's basically like being able to do sublimation without a sublimation printer. I don't know about you, but sometimes trying a new craft with my Cricut can be kind of overwhelming because there are so many different types of supplies and materials that I need to start a new project, it just stresses me out. So one way that I love to stay organized is by creating checklists for my Cricut. And if you're anything like me, then I invite you to join my free craft resources vault for tons of different free checklists, downloads, and freebies that are made for Cricut crafters just like you to make Cricut crafting as least overwhelming as possible. Find it over on my website, DIYAlex.com. But once you get into the craft resources vault, I recommend that you save that URL. And you can do this by either bookmarking it on your computer, or you can open it up as a separate tab on your phone or tablet, and that way you can go in and out of the craft resources vault as much as you'd like. However, if you lose the URL, it's no big deal. You can just go back to DIYAlex.com and re-enter your name and email, and then you can get the URL all over again and go in and out of the vault as many times as you'd like to check for new freebies and downloads. What was your favorite tip about working with infusible ink in this video? Let me know down in the comments below. If you learned something in this video, then be sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to DIY Alex for more tutorials a lot like this one every single week. And if we're not already connected on social media, then I would love to get to know you. So please use the links down in the description to find me on your favorite social media platforms. All the hearts.